Today's episode of Desertwood Days with Kathy Blaze was sponsored by Dork Publishing. Visit them at dorkpublishing.com. I want to visit all the places nobody goes. I want to teach all the things that nobody knows. I want to grow wings, leave the coop, learn to fly. Bungee jump from the tallest building in Dubai. I want to fly around town in my UFO. I want to eat real food, not the GMOs. I want to make moves, call the shots like the boss. I want to love like I never lost. Welcome back to Desert Wood Days. Today we have an exciting show for you. Our first guest is, he's an actor, he's an author, and he's much more than that. Let's welcome Mr. Lauren F. Akers. Well, hello, I feel like I'm on a dating game. <laughs> <laughs> good to see good you. Good morning, good morning, how are you? Great. Excellent. Good to see mm -hmm. you, it's well, been you. a while. Absolutely, absolutely. I think the last <laughs> time I saw you, we were on a stage performing. Absolutely, <laughs> that's it, doing our stage reading, uh, a rebirth of what we had did, I guess, several years before. Yeah. So they brought us back, so that's gotta be a good thing. Yes, so, yeah. that has to be a good thing. Yes, huh? <laughs> absolutely. So, Mr. Lauren, mm -hmm. I want to know a little bit about Mr. Lauren, and I'm sure our audience does hmm, as well. Right. Where, where, where are you originally from? Well, I am a, I guess I call it dependent. Other people will call, um, I don't know, a military brat. But oh, I prefer okay. to call military dependent. <laughs> so my father was in the Air Force for a number of years, and so that's kind of where I hail from. I actually joined the service myself, served uh, just under 10 years in the United States Air Force. Oh. And so that's kind of what I was one of those who traveled every several years and been here, being there. So that was always fun to us to be able to rebirth and go to a new place every yes. few years or so. I imagine that was. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So how did you end up here in Arizona? Well, it's interesting. Uh, I was a recruiter for way back when Hollywood Video. If anybody oh. remembers Hollywood Video. So, okay, you uh, age it as well. Yeah, now. yeah, you're <laughs> absolutely right. So I was in California doing that. And they were growing and expanding, so they brought a number of recruiters in, because I was in the Air Force. My last position in the Air Force was a United States Air Force recruiter, uh, talking to young people in Watts area uh, as a minority recruiter, talking to families about what the aspects of the Air Force. So that led to doing my own thing for a little bit as a, as a contract recruiter. And that led to Hollywood Video. Oh, and so okay. they were expanding. They said, okay, here are the areas that where we can uh, we want new recruiters to go to. It was, it was a cold, 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 hot. <laughs> I'm going to the warm place. <laughs> so that was here in Arizona. So I moved here. And shortly after that, they started bringing on those online type of things, you know, kiosks. Yeah. So yeah. let alone that was one of those things where we promoted ourselves out of a job. Yes. Because then you don't necessarily need someone to be there hand on hand. You know, I kind of miss Blockbuster. <laughs> those places. Like, yeah, I kind of miss those yeah. places because um, I you, I always found a friend there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or ran into an old friend. <laughs> now, now you weren't one of those who found a friend in that little X-rated place. You no. Ran in there. Oh, okay. I'm just, just just checking it out. Not trying to out you or anything, but, but you uh, know what? You never know, huh? Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. So that's kind of what I, that's what brought me out here, yeah. and then of course the demise of the company itself, mm. and so I uh, kind of went off and did recruiting for a di number of different companies. Oh, okay. And eventually led to my current job in terms of, so that's kind of where I am now. Okay, yeah. Yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. So we know that you're a actor. Mm -hmm. You're you're just amazing on the on well, that big stage I, out there. Yeah. How did you get into that? What inspired you to step foot on that stage? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, years ago, it's one of those where even in the military, uh, as a dependent, as a child, they used to have different uh, black heritage things and. Mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So one of those was also doing on um, performing uh, uh, speeches and things of that nature about your favorite, you know, uh, character in life. And so I've always kind of remembered that everywhere I went, I went uh, in school and everything else, I was involved in some sort of thespian, something around. Oh, okay. And so when I came out here, though, I said, you know what, I think I want to step into that space a little bit more. When I was in L.A., I did a old video, um, you know, it was a friend of mine had some connections and did a video, so we're hanging out there. But when we came out here, though, I said, you know what, that, it'd be interesting to get on stage. Mm -hmm. And so I was bugging the folks there at Black Theater Troop. They said, look, I want to be, I want to be in a show. So I was bugging them constantly. He said, look, <laughs> just get in here because I don't want you bothering us. All right, you know? just throw them up yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So the first show that I was actually in was called uh, Joe Turner's Come and Gone. Mm -hmm. It was an August okay. Wilson play. Oh, okay. And so I played the character Jeremy. So I had a lot of fun. They just redid that a couple of years, about a year or so ago. 
but I did it uh, 10, 20 years ago or something. Uh, okay. So then it just led to Black Theater Troupe, Actors Theater, Phoenix Theater, Herberger. So yes. all, a lot of different stuff. Just kind of just getting out there and just, you know, just uh, learning and growing, you know, right. auditioning to everything uh, through the schools, U of A, ASU, right. and, anything that will come up. And you've been on some beautiful stages. God is good. Herberger, yeah. one. Yeah, um it. Black Theater Troupe. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. those are beautiful theaters. Yes, Very absolutely. Beautiful. Absolutely. So, you started doing this because, you know, you started um, doing the speaking and mm -hmm. everything, you moved to Arizona. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about one, one of those instances, which was your, which is more memorable for you? Right. Um, more memorable. I think they all have their different place in my heart. Um, I'm an inch, typically an introvert, mm -hmm. so this is kind of my opportunity to step out of the house and say, okay, world, here I am, and then once I'm done, I come back and just go back and recharge. Oh, okay. So th these, are, these are really more therapy for me oh, okay. to be able to come out in these opportunities to be able to explore, because um, you know, doing interviews and stuff is not really my niche. It's not really something this but because uh, talking about me is tough. Talking mm -hmm. about characters is kind of fun. I can kind of right. come out and be that person. Right. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, but I, I would say uh, probably the most um, memorable here is really most recently in playing the character of Malcolm X with yes. Larissa Brewington and her uh, Reverend King and Minister X. Yes. And, and I hate that I missed that. Oh, too. it's it's really good based obviously on the real characters. And so this opportunity, the meeting never actually happened. So she created this opportunity through her research mm -hmm. to what would these characters say to each other? How would they engage each other in this fictional world? Wow. And so, but just learning about him, realizing, wow, I didn't really know a lot about him. You hear the, the headlines and such, but right. he's a deep character. And yeah. so obviously with Reverend King as well, mm -hmm. and how they were starting to more from their well-known just opposing views mm -hmm. started to come more towards the middle right. because of just what was going on in the outside world realizing that you know you can't stay in these extreme uh opinions mm -hmm. but it perhaps and then their own growth brought them more towards the middle so oh, so you played malcolm i played malcolm x so basically my beard was gone and kind of get to the oh, goatee okay. thing so brought the different glasses and they had to learn i'm a christian so so my views are different from his, but sure. just learning to understand where he was coming from. Mm -hmm. And since I was in the military, I spent some time in Saudi Arabia. I got the chance to experience what it was like to be in a country where you can't bring your Christian, your, uh, Christian uh, crosses, Bibles. Mm -hmm. None of that was allowed there. And there was no embassy. So you, you, they told you right up front, don't bring anything with you. Mm -hmm. In fact, even when I did worship there, it was one of the first opportunities for me to even testify in an open arena was they had a door, it's called the meeting place, because you couldn't say anything Christian, anything like wow. that. So we went in there and they had times where they had Protestant and Catholic and Jewish, so all these different opportunities. So you had to catch your time in the meeting place mm. and go and worship. So I said, wow, this is a place where I can come and said, you know, there isn't a church on every corner. So you really had to, in a place where you're not really welcomed for your religion, mm. this is a place where it's like, wow, this is pretty deep. So it allowed me to really say, you know what? <laughs> I can't just walk outside. I have to really be in my faith. And I started to respect the uh, their religious beliefs because um, when they were praying five times a day, it was going over right. loudspeakers. Uh -huh. And so when I first got there, I was like, wow, what is that? What is that noise? And just praying mm -hmm. and realize that the whole world shut down there. So when they're praying, if you're in, you're in. If you're out, you're out. They locked, locked the doors. Mm -hmm. Nothing moved, nothing happened until the prayer was over, opened the doors, life happened, and you can go about your business. Said, These people don't play church as we say, do right, here. Right. These folks are for real. Right, so right, it, right. it allowed me to really respect So did um, mm -hmm. that give you a, a bigger appreciation for what uh, Malcolm X was about or what he was um, preaching? Yes, yes. So when you mentioned in terms of what was memorable, it's just that brought back those memories of, Wow, this is a powerful character. So I really need to. So Larissa was good about the research. Mm. So I wanted to really embody what she was really directing and teaching. And of course, I read the book when I was in Saudi Arabia, the autobiography of Malcolm X. Right. So I was like, wow, I had to recall some of the information. So that's one of the most memorable. Hopefully, that's a long answer right. to your to your question. But, right. Yeah. 
You know what? I, I've watched so, several shows about him, and mm -hmm. they tend to leave out a lot of the good stuff. Right. They want us to focus on things that they find as a, a negative um, connotation towards him. Right. So there's a lot that they leave out. So you have to do your research. You got to do your research, delve in. Exactly. Well, I know that um, because I've worked with you before. Mm -hmm. I know that that had to be a very strong performance because there are very two very strong actors on that stage. T.A. Um, was one of our guests, for, I believe, season one. Powerful. Yes, and he's a powerful comedian, <laughs> actor. Um, he just does it all. We know yeah. that. He comes with his A game. No yeah, doubt. thank you for all your contributions here in Arizona. Absolutely. So you've done all this theater. Where do you see yourself in, say, five years? It's interesting. Now that I'm becoming an empty nest and my daughter's graduating, just graduated from high school, going off and into college now. So I'm realizing, okay, what else can I do? What can I bring to the forefront? So I just started to do my research on perhaps at some point being a podcaster. So okay. um, at my church, I've done children's church teacher with a little pre-K little kid. So I spend more time on my knees than I had actually on my feet. <laughs> so uh, talking to the youngins, you know, because right. their, their attention span is like here. So yeah. you have to be ready. I come in with the script of what we're going to, verses and stuff we're going to go over. Some but, of those old folks' attention uh, yeah, spans right exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I end up just going all different directions with them. And even though I was in the military, I was a, a cadet training officer. So I would help those uh, uh, cadets who are uh, wanting to become officers, going to their camps and helping them, giving them things to do with no time to do it. Oh. So I'm realizing I work a lot with youth. And oh. so I just um, want to explore perhaps delving into that area of in the education and mm -hmm. working with young people. And so that's I'm doing my research now, just uh, thinking of uh, YouTube casting and what it would take to oh, establish okay. a business. Um, that type of thing. And so filming, doing myself as a podcaster. So learning, I have some some uh, appointments with folks who are doing it now to learn more about it. So I think I'm a really kind of move into that area. Okay. Those things are in your bucket list. Uh, you know, it talks about if you're a Christian that when you get to heaven, there's this room full of gifts. And so I want my gift to be a room to be empty because <laughs> I would have utilized all those different things while here. While on you're Earth. here on Earth. Exactly. <laughs> so get out there, whatever it is you want to do, especially from the pandemic. You know, we realize that sitting at home, there's so many things that we want to do that we couldn't at the time. That's so true. we're not we're not going to waste time. People are not here anymore. Let's get that out there and do true. life, you that know, do true. it while we're here. I totally it's, agree. Yes. I totally agree. So, no need to save it. That's it. So yes. that's why I appreciate what you're doing here. You're Thank out there you. doing your thing. You're acting. You, you know, you had your uh, blazing curves. And so all these different things you're doing Thank and you. have done. And so you're going to say, look, I've done this, 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 and this. I'm not just this dash if you will, in your life, you're out there doing stuff. So it's yeah, full. <laughs> and there's still a lot more to do. A lot more to do. Lot more exactly. to do because you know what I believe that no matter what we're doing, we're here also to to mentor and help others right. as well. Right. The giving yeah. is what it's all about as yes, well. Yes, that is very true. Mm -hmm. So um I know that you've also authored a book. Yes. Can yes. we talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. That was um it's called Not By My Hand, A Father's Warm Room Whispers. Oh, okay. So it's on Amazon. It's, it, it wasn't anything that I sought out to do. Um, just in that oh, journey, okay. sometimes of fatherhood, things don't necessarily always That's work beautiful. out. So thank you. That's a real actual photo of uh, my daughter wanted me to just feels it choke up now. She she wanted her fingernails painted. Oh. So I didn't really you know, I do all <laughs> that. So I just had to learn and ask people. So what does it take? Where do we get it? And so, I, you know, uh, painted her fingernails. And so that was something she was proud of. She wanted me to right. see that. So I took a picture and sometimes people don't always appreciate when fathers are doing things for their daughters. So that didn't go too well oh. in other areas. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna have to do me, not focus on the noise, right. but work on my relationship with her. So that's right. what I talked to men about yeah. and I have. And so, so I went back into some of the history and explored and just wrote down some of those different things that I experienced. And it just so happens to come out and more of a book. So it's not necessarily me as a father against others. Mm -hmm. It's the relationship, my daughter. I didn't want her to grow up and say, where were you, Dad? Right. When I, grew, I wanted to know you, but I was not in a position to ask for you because I'm too young. So I wanted to fight and everything else. It got to a point, I even talk about it in the book, where I, I, I couldn't afford my attorney, but it's one of those where I get the bills, I didn't even open up. So I had a mm -hmm. whole folder full of these bolded email messages. And so... <laughs> I can't afford to pay. I just pay what I could and right. keep moving from there. So eventually it would get to a place. So 
the title came about because I was asking God, am I going to be in her life? Mm. And so he said, yes, but not by my hand, not by mine, um, but by his. And so uh -huh. eventually led to a point where I was able to get my stuff together, do with the court systems, deal with all of that, get back into the plus because many years I was definitely way in the negative, mm. got to a point with the positive. So, and now she's graduating, I'm in her yes. part of her life. And so I just tell fathers out there, look, just hang in there. You're not fighting, competing. Keep your focus on your kiddo. Right. And almost an offshoot of what Michelle Obama talked about, how you know, when they go low, you go high. But I kind of flipped that and said, when you go low on your knees and look up on the high. Mm. So in that way, you can have that relationship with your child, spouse, whatever the case is. Right. And so that's really what the focus is, that, that they grow that's up knowing great. who you are. Is that such a teaching moment for so many parents, fathers mm -hmm. or mothers that's right. going through a situation of trying to love on their children because that's what it's all about is loving on your child right and um because the child sees each parent in such a different way right i right. mean it doesn't matter what's going on outside i mean all they can see is that person right you're the mirror that's what they're seeing because a lot of mothers would say people would say well fathers don't feel so well hold on, hold on you may not necessarily know when i go to bible study with men they're on their knees crying but they come out the back of you know you know, they're not going to show that, you know, so, but I, I take them on a journey with me and say, look, this is how I feel. You won't necessarily see that, but we do. That's wonderful. Yes. That's, so <laughs> where do you um, plan on taking, is is there a sequel to this one? Well, some friends of mine who were uh, experiencing that with me during the time, because at the, you know, in order to see my child at the time, I had to kind of get outside help to be able to be and have that third party or other person there. So they were saying, well, now that she's great you should perhaps have some sort of additional piece that kind of talks about the post. Mm. And so I'm thinking about it, but you know, a lot of things that you, you deal with in a moment, you know, you want to put that away because I don't necessarily want, because it took a lot to really drum up to, to write the book and everything else. So I can talk to people about it, but it does um, uh, at least elicit some sort of thought. I say, well, maybe I could or would, but uh, right now I'm just focused on, you know, this next chapter or being there with her as she's That's going to college, wonderful. but that, that could be, in essence, a book in itself or sure, story in and of sure. itself to explore and let fathers know that once again, it's about the child. And you know, there's so many stories out there. Right. There are so many stories when it comes to our children. Yes, yes. I'd like to ask you as mm -hmm. a mature man, what advice would you give to um, an, a, a guy out there watching right now that would like to be an actor mm -hmm. or an author and but thinks he can't do it? Well, one thing I learned is just that, and I've told this to several friends, I said, really, don't think of it as um, all the money and the glory. Um, get out there, just audition. There are plenty of opportunities that are for free that you can go. A lot of, st the easiest perhaps is, I know that they have film studios through the colleges, and they're looking for actors out there. And there's certain websites, uh, durantcom.com is uh -huh. where I went to, and you see a lot of audition notices. And just don't be afraid to just jump out there and say, hey, what are I paying? Look, it's not about the pay. It's about the experience, learning right. and growing. Right. And um, don't necessarily wait for other people to write your your story. Perhaps consider writing yourself, developing the, the craft, getting partnering up with other people mm -hmm. uh, to collaborate on different things. You know, right. there's a number of uh, filmmakers and writers that are right here. At Iris but Huey I'm too folks. old. Uh, what? There's always a new story. You know, talk, you know, uh, Dave Ramsey talks about how, you know, uh, Colonel Sanders, you know, was in the 70s, 80s and he developed that. So Still I'm like, chicken. yeah, exactly. You can be old and just jump out there. The ideas are for, there's just too many stories that are buried in the ground in cemeteries right now, more than those stories that are being produced right now. And so if you wait for Hollywood, especially in the, in, in the minority community, waiting for Hollywood, sometimes it's tough. So right. you'd be able to go out there and create your own story. So a lot That's of times people don't know. And just listen to the story we talked that's about Christian how some Martinez. Some people get yeah. noticed is by creating their own story. Creating you know, exactly content out there. That's it. You hear it all the time. Well, Tyler Perry or certain um, producers right. saying, "Well, I saw this person on Instagram or mm -hmm. TikTok or whatever." So you, you have to get out there and make moves on your own. I think even Longoria is producing or directed a show now, or the movie that's just coming out, Hot Chips or something like that, mm -hmm. where it talks about those uh, the, the snack products from a guy who was a janitor. And so he went and got it created. Now they have the product that's out here now, so the snacks. Awesome. So yeah, yeah. Any new projects coming up? Well, like I mentioned, kind of doing my research here for this podcast to see if that's something I want to do. Um, I also teach CPR here in the local area since 2009. 
So I've been working with just a lot of people who want to learn, especially with all the drownings that happen here, uh -huh. and to be able to be prepared. One of the people who attended my uh, class, she was a young lady who, oh, Lord, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your class, I'm gonna take your class. Unfortunately, she waited too late. Her father passed, she was in an environment, wasn't able to really help him because she didn't really know what to do. And, and you so know what, not only that, all these filmmakers having all these productions, we need someone on set that knows how to do CPR. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's it. so training, so between training perhaps learning podcasting, taking that pivot and explore those different things that are in my bucket list. That's yes, that's what's kind of going on. That's wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. It was such a pleasure. And where can our audience find you? Um, right now, just on uh, Facebook and on um, Instagram. So Lauren Akers or Akers Lauren, I guess, out there. But you can Google and, and find me out there. So, yeah, that's it. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us today here at Desert Wood Days. And we'll catch you next time. Desert Wood Days with Kathy Blaze was sponsored by Dork Publishing. Visit them at dorkpublishing.com.